Okay, tell us a little bit about about how you go about a search here. You were explaining to me a little earlier about uh, uh, kind of a grid and, uh, and, and how the state police are also giving you a hand. Yeah, today we have uh, both the National Park Service dive team as well as the New York State Police dive team is, is uh, working with us, assisting in the recovery efforts. Um, how we go about doing this after the initial emergency response and, and uh, uh, it moves from rescue operations into recovery operations is uh, uh, we begin the, pro the process of a very systematic search. So we uh, lay out a search pattern on the bottom of the river using ropes which the divers will follow and that ensures that, that, we, that, we, that we systematically cover as much of the river bottom as we, as we can as we, as we go down working from above the point last seen, through the point last seen, and then continue downstream th through our, our highest probability areas for, for locating and recovering the body of the victim. And you mentioned also the state police have a, a device that's helping you as well? Yes, the state police are also utilizing the side scan sonar, which allows us to take a look at the, at the profile, bottom profile of the river and pick up any anomalies on the bottom. Uh, again, it may indicate areas that a, either we want to dive on or they may actually be able to, to, to pick up on the body and then we'll be able to base our recovery on that. And the current, uh, you know, this time of year, you know, what are you dealing with with that? Um, the, the river uh, at this particular time of the year is in fairly typical conditions. It is higher than what's considered normal. Uh, we measure it by river height. River height normally is three to four feet. It's about four and a half feet currently. And at the time of the accident on Sunday, uh, the river was up just under five feet. So the river, had, uh, again, has, it was a little bit higher on Sunday, so the current was moving a little bit quicker. Visibility was not as good as it is today, and, and visibility still is not as good as, as it is, again, during normal flow, you know, normal, normal summer flow heights. And, uh, um, when we have not had rain, which is, again, that's what's impacted on our visibility uh, on Sunday and, and yesterday and today is the rains that we had earlier last week. And talk to us also about, you know, about the deceptiveness of this. I mean, people that look at this and think, oh, you know, this is just a nice tranquil pond and, uh, and then they do uh, dumb things like not wear their life jacket and, you know, talk to us about what you seem to deal with, you know, every year with this. I think that, you know, it really comes down to just a few common denominators is overestimating one's ability and underestimating what the river does and, and being, being lulled into complacency by that casual observation of what's going on. But yet there are a lot of dynamics going on in a moving body of water, whether it's a river or the ocean, that's much different than what you find in, in even a, a lake or a pond or let alone a swimming pool. It's a very different dynamic and, and the other factors that come into play that people don't, don't necessarily understand or think about is the, the topography of the bottom and the depth of the river can change very quickly. Um, and these slow moving eddies are a good example of that. You can move through a a section of the river that's faster moving water that would appear perhaps to be more dangerous but yet it's very shallow one can stand you know it's knee deep it's waist deep one can stand in those areas but then you move into these slow moving areas and it can be deceptively deep some areas in the eddy here are 20, 20 plus feet deep so you go from a section of the river where you can touch bottom easily touch bottom easily and then all of a sudden you're with little or no warning in an area that looks deceptively calm and, and and, and tranquil, you go into the water and you can't touch bottom anymore. Um, and the, you know, the biggest thing is, is, is we have not had a fatality on the river when someone has been wearing a properly fitted life jacket. And if people would just wear their life jackets, whether they're swimming, fishing, boating, floating, whatever recreation they're doing on the river, if they would just wear their life jackets, uh, you know, I hate to you know, sound like a cliche, but that life jacket is a lifesaver. And if they just wear those life jackets, swimming, boating, fishing, floating.